Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. This is Melissa with the StockSwish.com. Hello there. I thought I would do a review of today. I had some meetings this afternoon, and when I came back, I saw, of course, Netflix looking at it right now, the chart in the market. I'm going to bring it up here in a moment, and I'm going to review what the market did today, and then I'm going to review Netflix, because Netflix really was the best quality gap today. It really was the best trade today, and I saw it. I saw that it was going to gap up yesterday before it even did it. I knew that the gap was going to gap up on the earnings, and it had earnings last night, and boy, I mean, it, it went to the dream target today, actually. So let's go over it. Okay, here's the chart. So, all right, let's go back. Actually, let me just bring this up here for the stuff from last night. This was today. Okay, so last night Netflix had earnings and it did gap up on the earnings. And my call was that it would gap up on the earnings and gap up over 500, which is actually what it did. Okay, now it did it go over 500. It went to some crazy, crazy number. It, it, it flew over 500. At one point last night, it actually was all the way up to 542. Now, I didn't know really where this would open in the morning, meaning I didn't really know if it would work on the live day as a long or a short, intraday as a day trader. Again, I'm a day trader until I see the pre-market in the morning in the gap because there were so many things this could have done because the gap up last night was so massive that it could have done a lot of different things between now and then this morning. But then I dig it up in the morning. And I did see the gap in the morning. And how do you use the system? You rate the gap. And you can sometimes rate gaps at night, and then you can just double check it in the morning. But I like to wait to the morning, so I waited, and Netflix was along them in the intraday. So it held the gap, and the placement of the price of the gap in the morning, I saw that it would still work out as a long of the day. Now let me take this off. You could have been very, very aggressive in this today. Let me just look at this. You could have gone long right here, Netflix. This is like amazing. Look at how it held 530. That was the low of the day. This is gorgeous. I mean, it was a gorgeous scab. <laughs> Anyways, you could have gone long Netflix here. The stop would have been basically $4, okay? But the target, the real target was 550, okay? It got to almost 550, the first target by 10 o'clock. And you could have just been all out. And this is a huge trade here. Okay, The stock lose $17 from the entry in the first 30 minutes of the day. If you had 100 shares of it, you would have made $1,700. If you had 200 shares of it, you would have made $3,400. Okay. Now, as it turns out, Netflix did get to the number 550, which I knew that it would get to 550. But I said the dream target on the live day. Dream target was 565.65. And would you believe that it actually got there? Wait, let me bring up the 15 minute. You had to hold it. You had to hold it all afternoon. You were up in it. You could have taken the morning trade, got out of it at, at basically 547-ish, the, the first target, which is almost 550. And you could have replayed it. You could have actually replayed it in here around the late morning. Again, I typically don't trade this time. But if you're up money and you want to do it and it has a setup and it still has the play in it and it still has target left, which this did because it really didn't hit 550, I think, until, yeah, until the afternoon. But do you see here what it did over the 550? In the bar that it hit the target of 550, it had the massive move. This bar here alone is over $6. It happened at 1245, which is a weird time for this to be happening, I got to tell you. I mean, this is this just had nothing but buying all day. It was just straight up buying all day. It like didn't even back up. This is like amazing. Anyways, you could have bought it here and just rally it on up, but the dream target was 565.65, and it actually went past that. It went to 568.75. It almost got to 570, and then that's it. I mean, but you could have done this in the afternoon, the late morning, early afternoon. That's really not typically when I trade, but you absolutely could have taken it, and it held all day. 
And I just want to show the daily chart on this. That, my friends, is institutional buying at its finest. And I'm actually going to talk about this in the webinar next week because I'm doing a webinar on playing on the side of banks and, and hedge funds, which are the real people that move money in the market. And, you know, someone asked me something today, and then I thought about the answer to it. Well, it came to me. The answer just came to me like about an hour after I had the conversation or so, or a few hours after the conversation. Only institutional money can ever make or break a trend in the market or stock. That is what the power of real money is. Now, there are so many different levels of money. Like, there's small money, there's medium, there's, I mean, there's just so many different levels. But when, when I say power of money, when I say that, when I talk about power of money, when I talk about institutional money, what I'm really meaning is an amount of money that would have the power to buy Netflix up from the close of the night before, which was 475.46, and open it today on the open at 532. Okay? So that power of money to me is an extraordinary amount, so large, so massive that you cannot even comprehend it. You can call it billions, we can say zillions, okay? It's, it's an amount of money that is so massive and so powerful that you, can, you do not want to trade against it. And in reference to Netflix, and why this is such a beautiful example, okay? This stock moved, power of money, which moved the stock, okay? That's how it happened. Move this stock up $56 plus from the close last night and ran it up today. The low was $530. This is like so beautiful. Almost ran $40 on the day. In fact, let's just figure it out exactly. I just want to know exactly. High of the day here is $568.75. Close of last night is $475.46. It's almost $100. That's what I'm talking about. This is such a great example of that. Listen, this is very important. Here, let me bring my face up again so you can, underst you can understand me. When I say power of money in a stock or the market, it's an amount that's so massive that it could do something that created the Netflix. It created the Netflix gap and rallied the Netflix gap and it kept going up. Now, did traders buy Netflix today? Yes. Did traders make that stock rally almost $40 in the day though? No, not alone. Institutional money bought that stock today. Institutional money made the gap, held the gap in the sky, in midair, and then bought it $40 in the day. And yes, there were traders long. Yes, there were, okay? But that's not the point. The point I'm trying to say is that institutional money and playing with it is the way to really make money in the stock market. And if you know how to read that, you can profit in an enormous way, in an enormous way, in a way that I cannot even describe, which is very, very exciting. But the thing is that sometimes you have a trade that a lot of traders do, whether long or short, it doesn't even matter, okay? But they're not really controlling the stock. It's called temporary control. Temporary control. Here, I'm going to show you one another. Here, this is another great example that happened here today. Sandisk. Sandisk gap down today. It didn't work out as a short. If you shorted Sandisk today, you lost money no matter where you did it. Okay? Well, it actually did have one move in the morning. Anyways, on the day, intraday, the control was to the upside, bullish for SanDisk. But is, are there heavy institutional buying that happening in SanDisk right now? No. No, 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 no. In fact, uh, this would be interesting to see what this does. Sandus has one more shot here, one more shot of itself, and I'm not sure it does it. But either way, the, the temporary control here today in Sandus was to the upside, okay? But really, this stock is actually neutral, which is very, very unusual here. I'm just seeing this is actually neutral. This really isn't even in a downtrend. It's not an uptrend. This is neutral, and that's unusual. This is going to do something significant here. And it didn't do it today, and it did have earnings today. I don't know what this is going to end up doing. It's either going to 
get back and fix itself up into an uptrend with the market rallying here or it's going to break again. And it's, it could go either way because this is actually neutral. This is rare. It's unusual. It's weird that a stock will be in a neutral pattern here, but this is actually in neutral positioning here. The way that this is, this isn't full on broken yet. And yet it's not in an uptrend. But anyways, today in the intraday control, the intraday control was in the bulls. Okay. But this isn't a good stock to go long at all. I got to tell you, this is a piece of crap to go long right now. In fact, there's nothing to do in this. Neutral means stay away, wait, wait it out, all right? And if you're along this, you should have been out of it. And if you're in anything in this, you probably were short in it. But I really wouldn't even be short in this right now long term because this could go either way. I got I to gotta tell you, this is neutral. It's a neutral pattern. It's very unusual. And stocks don't stay in that type of look and a neutral trend for long ever when they do. Okay, getting back to my point. This is a temporary control on the day to the upside, but this is real control, which is to the upside, like full on, not just on the day in the overall chart here of Netflix. See the difference? So that is what results when power money takes over a chart. Okay, getting back to what I was saying. So when power money takes over a chart, and it's in there. You might have the temporary control on the one live day that it works in the opposite direction of the overall trend. This happens all the time. Okay, That's why really you don't trade the same stock every day. Even if you read the trend and that trend, you can't go along the same, that stock every day. Even if stock is in a downtrend, you can't take shorts and short the stock every day to the downside. That, that's why you have to do a different stock every day depending on how it's gapping. And you rate the gap and you play the gap. Now, if you want to do things for long-term core trades, you need to be in in the trend of the stock. And your entry, though, and your targets and all of that, still, it has to be correct, okay? Not just the actual direction, okay? The entry matters. Like, for example, you can't be long. Uh, I can't even think of something right to use. Just whatever. You can't be long something at a bad placement or the stock could pull in. You'll be down in the trade and be negative in it for a while before it flips around and goes over. You may not be able to withstand the pain in that or you're counting down for the time. So it still counts for the timing and when you're taking it for the entry. Okay, I just wanted to be clear on that. But getting back to what I was originally saying, what I realized when I was thinking about this that came to me later today is that when I talk about power money, I talk about something like, for example, the Netflix, the power to be able to buy a gap up 50 some dollars overnight and rallied on the day 40 some dollars. The stock had almost a hundred dollar move. It was now over $93 from the close of business yesterday until the, until the high of today. And that, my friends, again, is power money. And that's what I'm talking about. And only institutions, hedge funds, banks can make or break a trend in a chart. There are days when you have temporary control that happens from traders. Yes, that's true. But in the most part, traders really don't move stocks that much unless there's a lot of them with a lot of volume in the same direction. Usually what happens is you have different people doing things in different directions and it wiggles and jiggles and it doesn't really do anything right. That's not what I do. I rate the gap. I read the gap and I rate the gap. It rates 20 points or more depending on the direction that I'm looking to do it. But I'm saying in general, in reference to traders moving things to the answer to the question, it has to do with the fact that it is only institutions that change or break a trend, which is significant. And that's why you have to learn how to read overall trends and gaps combined. It's, it's the overall trend and the gap combined. Because you might be in something that's a good long. You're in it, you're in the stock, and you're long it. And then it gaps down, OK? You might have the gap down as a short, traded on the day, short as a day. It might rate 20 points or more per the 26-point rating system to short intraday as a day trade. You short it. But you're in the stock long, and maybe it is still an uptrend. It's still a good long, you see? So you don't necessarily want to exit it maybe on the back, in the gap down. You short it, though. You make money on the day. doesn't have the follow-through. You had that with the market a bunch of times in the last few months. And I kept looking and I said, there's no follow through here to the downside. Okay? Because there really, because there wasn't. There wasn't any follow through to the downside in the market. Anyways, there it is. It's Netflix. Just wanted to review that here. Amazing went to the dream target. How many things are going to go to the dream target this earnings season? Enough. Enough that if you did every single one of them, you'd be fat and happy. And you were fat and happy if you did Netflix today, if you did 
anything right in it. And do you know that some people try to short this today? They probably try to short it a million times. Did that help it go to the dream target? Maybe, but it still wouldn't have went there without institutional buying. It still wouldn't have went, went there without institutional buying. There was no weakness in that stock today. It was a great, great long. It was a great call by me. I predicted it to happen. The swing trade letter that I did back in January, uh, actually, I said the target was 500. Netflix hit that number on through in the gap up last night. The next target for Netflix in the bigger, bigger time frame. I have to look at the individual ones. Obviously, 575, 75. I have to really look hard at what these numbers are and see what it does tomorrow. I did know 565 today, that was the dream target, and it got through that. It just ran out of day. Anyway, 700, 750, and I'm not even saying that can't happen this year. It is only April, and I am calling the market bull this year. Netflix is a beast in the market. Netflix is moving ahead of the market as well, which is very, very bullish. You know, 700, 750 is possible for Netflix now, this year, this calendar year in 2015. And that, you know, is, is just amazing. It's amazing. It's, I love it. Anyways, this is Melissa with the stockswish.com. If you're interested in the next Golden Gap class, it's April 25th and 26th. Email me at melissa at the stockswish.com for more information and congratulations to everyone. Everyone who did Netflix today long. If you shorted it today, you have no business trading in the market. You've got to understand how to read banks and hedge funds and institutions in the market. They really took hold of this stock today and they own it. I mean, they are in control of this baby here. So have a great day, everyone. Have a wonderful evening.